Hello guys, today we will be proving the 5 color theorem. 5 color theorem basically says that for any planar graph G, we have a chromatic color of at most 5. The chromatic color indicates how many colors you need at least to color the graph you have. So, what's coloring? Coloring is basically taking the vertices of a graph and giving them a color. Here we indicated each color using a number. So, 1 stands for green, 2 for blue, and 3 for red. Uh, with coloring, you have to color each adjacent vertex with a different color. So this vertex can be 2 or 3 since they're adjacent to it, and this vertex can be 1 or 3 because they're adjacent to it, and this can be 1 or 2. So this graph has a chromatic color of 3 because you can't use less than 3 colors to color this graph. Moving on. So we will be proving this theorem using mathematical induction. First off, we need to use the following theorem. For any planar graph, we have a vertex of degree at most 5. Now, we will call this vertex A and we will use it in our proof. Our base case is the, uh, if a graph has one vertex. So that's simply one vertex. And this theorem holds for one vertex. You can color it using only one color. So that's easy. The other step is doing the actual induction. So we start off by assuming that for any graph, any planar graph with k vertices, the theorem holds. And we want to prove it for v uh, k plus 1 vertices. So we will call our uh, graph g. And we will call our original graph g minus a. So what are we doing here? We're basically taking out this vertex A, which we said that every planar graph ha has. So we're taking it out from our original graph, and we're assuming that this is true for G minus A. So building up from this, how can we prove it for G? For this, we have to take cases. In fact, we have to take four cases. Case number one is when G minus A has a chromatic color with uh, less than five. So basically, you can color G minus A using four or less colors. Simply, when you put A back, you just color it with the color you haven't used yet. You have five colors, and you used less than five colors. So that's simple. Case number two is when G minus A has a chromatic color equal to five, and A is of degree less than five. So A is four or less. This is like the case number one, where this is A, and each of its adjacent vertices is colored with um, a color, but you only used four or less colors, assuming that the degree of this vertex is less than five. So you have one color remaining, and you can simply just color A with that remaining color. Okay, so this is where the theorem gets a bit more tricky. So in this, in these two cases, G minus A, our original graph, has a chromatic color of 5, and A is of degree 5. So what does this mean? This means that this graph without A, our original graph, cannot be colored with less than 5 colors. And A in this graph is of degree 5, meaning it's connected to 5 uh, vertices. So the difference between these two uh, graphs is in PQ. So what's different about it? I haven't drawn all the edges in this graph, but the only ones that matter. So, notice PQ. P is color 3 and Q is colored 1. Now, the connection between PQ doesn't have a connection made of 1, 3 colors. Meaning, if we have a chain which alternates between 1, 3, 1, 3, right? You can't find it between P and Q. This is called a walk. So, P and Q don't, don't have a walk consisting of purely 1 and 3. We can have more edges here. This can be colored 1. This can be colored 3. We don't really care. This, this can have another connection too. You get the point. What we're really interested in and is, the, is these lines, are these lines. So, how do we solve this? It's very simple. Since they're not connected, if we flip one chain or one walk, the other doesn't flip. What does this mean? Flipping a walk looks like this. So, this is 1, 3, 1, 3. We're just gonna reverse them. This is gonna be 3, this is gonna be 1, this is gonna be 3, and this is gonna be 1. So, we do this here, and what this ends up looking like is we have... These vertices, this becomes color 3, this is 1, and this is 3. So now notice that one color isn't used by any of the neighbors of A, and that color is 1. So we can simply color A. Well, so moving on to the last case, where P and Q are connected with a walk that alternates between 1 and 3. What does that mean? We have P and Q here that are connected with this walk. A walk, by the way, is just uh, what you would think of when you say a walk. So just like, this is a walk when you go from this vertex to this vertex, this vertex. You can cover multiple, uh, the same vertex multiple times. So don't get confused by the term. Uh, so basically... Uh, P and Q are connected with a walk that alternates between 1 and 3. So we start at Q, this is 1, we go 3, 1, 3. So we can do this trick over here again. So wh what do we do? We use these two vertices now. Now notice this. Let's call this R and call this uh, S. Okay? So these two vertices have the same condition we had here. What does this mean? This is, this is colored 5, 4, 5, and this is colored 4 and 5. Okay, so... We can use the same trick we used here for these two vertices. Now, the question comes, what if these two vertices are connected? Well, this isn't possible, because you have this vertex, this vertex is in this region, okay? And the other vertex is in another region. We cannot connect them with, without intersecting 
the, uh, the graph. And what, what uh, property of the graph does this violate? The planarity of this graph. This graph is no longer planar if we connect these two. So since we violated the planarity of the graph, this case doesn't exist. So we can just disregard it. These two vertices cannot be connected together. So we, we're now done. We just have to use this trick here. And we color the vertex S with 5. Color its neighbor with 4. And we're done. We now have the 4 color not being used in any of the neighbors of A. So we just color it 4. And you get to the end of the proof.